For more than a century and a half, commerce between Europe and Asia has depended on navigating through the Suez Canal and Egypt. Recently, a new initiative was launched with the goal of altering trade routes, shifting the central hub away from Egypt to a different location. Iraq has embarked on an ambitious endeavor often referred to as a modern Silk Road, envisioning an upgraded network of highways and railways extending from the Persian Gulf through Baghdad, Turkey, and into Europe. This megaproject comes with a price tag of $17 billion and includes the construction of one of the world's largest ports. Nevertheless, both the Iraqi Prime Minister and the President of Turkey are in agreement that this venture promises substantial returns, presenting an opportunity to revolutionize the entire region. Today let's delve into Iraq's upcoming $17 billion corridor that will rival the Suez Canal. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. To grasp the audacity of attempting to rival the Suez Canal, one must appreciate the immense importance the canal holds. Since its inauguration in 1869, the Suez Canal has profoundly shaped Egypt, a significance that is difficult to overstate. By linking the Red Sea to the Mediterranean, it established the fastest maritime route between Asia and Europe via Egypt. This strategic advantage has not only enriched the country through toll revenues, but has also catalyzed the emergence of entire new urban centers over the decades. In 1956, the Egyptian president's declaration of the canal's nationalization precipitated a crisis that escalated into conflict just months later giving rise to the infamous Suez Canal crisis. Despite this, Egypt's geopolitical prominence continued to rise throughout the latter half of the 20th century. It's clear why controlling a crucial segment of one of the world's most lucrative trade routes can fundamentally transform a nation. Therefore, it's understandable why other Middle Eastern nations maintain a somewhat complicated relationship with the canal. Countries ranging from Saudi Arabia and Iran to Iraq rely on its strategic passage. In fact, Iraq actively supported Egypt's nationalization efforts in 1956. Despite their reliance on the canal, these nations have at the same time pursued alternative measures to reduce dependency on it. For instance, in the 1980s, Saudi Arabia constructed the East-West Pipeline, also known as the Petrol Line, a 746-mile dual pipeline system spanning the Arabian Peninsula. The Middle East has generally reaped rewards from the Suez Canal's nationalization, yet these gains have been unevenly distributed. Trade flourished across the region, but Egypt specifically enjoyed substantial direct income, increased foreign investments, and significant infrastructure advancements. In contrast, other nations have experienced more modest and indirect benefits. For decades, various Middle Eastern countries have quietly deliberated bypassing the canal, but until recently, no comprehensive and actionable plan had been announced to realize this ambitious vision. But everything changed in April 2023, when Turkish President Erdogan journeyed to Baghdad, where he finalized an agreement with Iraqi officials. The agreement aimed to enhance economic relations, address Iraq's water access needs, and notably, establish a new trade corridor. A month later, the specifics of this corridor were unveiled, stunning the global press. It emerged as perhaps the most audacious trade infrastructure initiative announced in the Middle East since the Suez Canal. Turkey and Iraq plan to construct highways and railways extending from the Persian Gulf through Iraq's oil-rich southern region, traversing the entire country and crossing into Turkey where it would link with established European networks. This monumental project will carry immense significance, offering shipping companies an alternative to the steep tolls of the Suez Canal. In 2022, these tolls reached $500,000 for the largest container ships. Currently, if you want to travel from the Iraqi port town of Al Fao to Baghdad, let alone to Turkey and beyond, you essentially have one option, driving on a freeway built in the 1980s, aptly named Freeway 1. Parts of this aging and poorly equipped freeway still consist of single carriageways, lacking a central divider between opposing traffic. While the freeway does pass through Baghdad, 
Much of the over 1,000 kilometer journey across Iraq traverses remote territory. Along the route, there are only a few hotels, and service stations are so scarce that traveling by gasoline-powered vehicles is challenging logistically. While sections of this solitary freeway are heavily used by local Iraqis, primarily for shorter trips, very little international trade utilizes it for obvious reasons. Iraq does have an existing railway system, but it is notoriously slow, making it impractical for oil transport or overnight travel. For instance, a passenger train from Basra to Baghdad can take up to 12 hours, averaging less than 30 miles per hour. For decades, Iraqi leaders have been frustrated by the fact that when looking at the map, the route from the Persian Gulf to Europe should be the most direct and efficient. This optimal route is exactly what Turkey and Iraq announced their intention to construct in May 2023. The project begins at the southern tip of the al Fal Peninsula, where Iraq initiated efforts in 2010 to develop the largest port in the Middle East. Phase 1, originally slated for completion in 2019, has been delayed until 2025, yet substantial headway has been achieved. In 2020, the Guinness Book of World Records recognized the port's expansive breakwaters as the largest globally. Builders have also finished fundamental infrastructure such as docks, berths, and quays, boasting a handling capacity nearing 100 million tons across various cargoes all with a price tag already approaching $5 billion. Named the Grand Canal Port, this facility will serve as a gateway to Europe for the upcoming trade route. Beyond the port, the foremost project on the agenda involves establishing an entirely new freeway network. In stark contrast to Freeway 1, this modern freeway will boast up to six lanes, each separated by a central divider. It will include a primary arterial highway connecting to Baghdad, complete with clear signage, state-of-the-art lighting, and surveillance technology like speed cameras. Additionally, the new freeway will be outfitted with numerous amenities including multiple service stations, rest areas, hotels, and restaurants, significantly enhancing the feasibility of long-distance travel. While the new freeway marks a significant advancement, it will be overshadowed by the parallel construction of a new railway system. This dual track system will run alongside the freeway, traversing the same locations to ensure comprehensive connectivity. Initially, the freight train is expected to handle an annual capacity of 3.5 million containers, transporting 22 million tons of cargo. This pales in comparison to the Suez Canal's annual throughput of over 500 million tons, However, there's no denying that this new rail link will encroach on the canal's advantages by providing a quicker alternative route. Adjacent to the freight service, the passenger train aims to revolutionize Iraqi rail travel, offering luxuries like onboard Wi-Fi and upscale dining services that are currently unavailable. Most significantly, the new train will dramatically reduce travel times, cutting the journey from Basra to Baghdad from 12 hours to just 2 hours. Iraq will be replacing its current 30 miles per hour trains with ones capable of speeds up to 186 miles per hour, similar to France's high-speed trains. If successful, this would represent one of the most significant advancements in train speed ever witnessed by any nation. Due to travel restrictions and economic challenges, a significant portion of Iraqi citizens have never traveled abroad or flown on an airplane. Instead, they rely on buses, slow trains, or sometimes poorly maintained roads for transportation. The prospect of traveling at nearly 200 miles per hour across the country represents a profound transformation for the millions projected to use the new service. The passenger trains are expected to accommodate 13 million travelers annually, underscoring the scale of this ambitious undertaking. This massive project will unfold not just over years, but decades. The construction of the corridor is planned in three phases, with completion slated for 2050. On April 22, 2024, during a visit by the Turkish president to Baghdad, Iraq signed a cooperation agreement for the development road project with Turkey, Qatar, 
and the United Arab Emirates, with substantial funding contributions from Doha and Abu Dhabi. While this partnership provides a significant boost, Iraq still grapples with formidable challenges along its new Silk Road. Foremost among these is the pervasive issue of corruption, exacerbated by years of sanctions and conflict, affecting both public and private sectors. Effectively and transparently managing a $17 billion multi-phase infrastructure project poses a significant challenge. Even if Iraq successfully navigates this hurdle, it must contend with another formidable obstacle, competition. Iraq finds itself as the underdog in a three-way competition to establish a new Silk Road. Both China and India are advancing their own ambitious projects to create a trade corridor linking Asia and Europe. These proposed routes bypass Iraq entirely. India's envisioned corridor would traverse Saudi Arabia and the UAE, enhancing the economic prospects of these already prosperous neighbors while potentially sidelining Iraq. This scenario underscores the competitive landscape Iraq faces as it strives to establish its position in the global trade network. To rival the Suez Canal, Iraq must forge ahead despite pervasive corruption and fierce competition from other nations vying for the same opportunity. However, successfully transporting 13 million passengers and 22 million tons of goods annually across a country scarred by conflict could potentially transform Iraq's trajectory. It could propel Iraq into the League of Prosperous Nations in the Middle East, alongside Kuwait, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. If Iraq achieves this feat, it could generate 100,000 new jobs and add $4 billion annually to its GDP. The path forward is challenging in many ways, but it is certainly within the realm of possibility. What are your thoughts on Iraq's efforts to build a modern silk route? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.